Howdy again everyone, and today we're looking at another in Sigma's series of bright aperture lenses for APS-C mirrorless cameras, and this one looks a little exciting, the 16mm f1.4 DC-DNC for contemporary. It's for Sony's E-mount cameras and Micro Four Thirds with their smaller sensors, and it costs about £380 in the UK or US$400, making it potentially good value for money, if it's any good. I'd like to thank Sigma UK for loaning me a review copy of this lens for testing, although as usual, this is a totally independent review. On Micro Four Thirds cameras, it'll be the full frame equivalent of a 32mm lens with a depth of field of f2.8. On one of Sony's APS-C cameras though, it's the full frame equivalent of 24mm with a depth of field of about f2, maybe f2.2 or so. I'll be testing it on my Sony cameras, where that focal length and bright aperture is far more interesting to me. It's a really wide angle, giving you dramatically stretched images, but not so wide that everything is pushed away into the distance. This isn't quite ultra-wide angle territory. And at f1.4, you can obviously get some fast shutter speeds for shooting indoors or in the dark, and getting some noticeable background separation too. Nice. As I mentioned, its image circle will cover an APS-C sized sensor. For your interest, here's what the image looks like on one of Sony's full frame mirrorless cameras if you're not shooting in crop mode. Well, let's take a look at the build quality first. It's not a huge lens, but it is quite substantial, being a little long and feeling solid and weighty at 400 grams. Slightly ugly lens on the outside really, but that's hardly top of the list of priorities. Its only control point is the large rubberized focus ring, which turns extremely smoothly and not too loosely. The focus control worked quite precisely on my Sony camera. The lens's autofocus motor is accurate, averagely fast, and pretty quiet, although if you listen carefully, you can hear a little whirring and clicking going on. Here is the autofocus in video mode, it's really quick. It's even a bit faster in stills mode. It does focus hunt a little sometimes, though. Bear in mind, this lens does not have image stabilization. Its filter size is 67mm, and it comes with a decently sized plastic lens hood. Overall, really nice build quality here. Ok, image quality. I'm testing on a 24 megapixel APS-C camera, my little Sony A5100, with in-camera corrections turned on. In the middle of the image at f1.4, sharpness is excellent right away, and contrast is also very good. Over in the corners, sharpness and contrast is a little reduced, but not much at all. For such a wide angle lens at f1.4, this is actually excellent quality. Stop down to f2, and image quality in the corners becomes excellent again, and at f2.8, they're almost perfect. The corners stay this sharp down to f8. Overall, those results speak for themselves here, really. The image quality of this lens is simply brilliant. Moving on, let's take a look at distortion and vignetting. The lens struggles a bit with rather strong barrel distortion, which is a shame. It's somewhat emphasised here, because I'm shooting close to my test chart, but it's almost as bad at normal distances too. At f1.4, vignetting is a bit strong, unsurprisingly for this kind of optic. At f2 though, the corners brighten a little, and at f2.8, they brighten a little again. The lens's closest focus distance is 25cm, very nice. It's fun to get close-up shots with bright aperture, wide-angle lenses. At f1.4, close-up image quality does deteriorate a little, we see sharpness, but quite a lot of purple colour fringing. f2 is better, but only at f2.8 does that colour fringing really clear up. It'll only be a problem on high contrast subjects though, to be fair. Let's see how the lens works against bright lights now. There's actually quite a lot of flaring here if you look carefully, but it's quite faint in its intensity, so in real world situations it won't be too much of a problem. Finally, bokeh. This lens's out of focus backgrounds aren't the softest I've ever seen, they can be a bit edgy, but there's nothing horrifically bad going on, they're not too distracting. 
So overall, the optical priority of a wide angle lens such as this is sharpness, and even at f1.4, the good news is that the Sigma 16mm f1.4c can really fly. Its distortion is rather strong, and the bokeh could be a little smoother, but its value for money, build quality, high contrast, and close focus distance are all brilliant, and aside from anything else, it's a fantastically useful lens. Those dramatically wide images, combined with the bright maximum aperture, makes it just so enjoyable to use. It's been a while since I've given any lens this particular accolade, but especially considering its very good value for money, it has to come highly recommended.